Hey everyone, um, welcome back to this Getting Started with Process Wire series. So we've, um, in the past videos, prepared our Process Wire installation folder. What we did was we took the standard Process Wire installer and we took out of it the standard default profile in it. And what we did is we got the Zerb Foundation for Site Profile and extracted from it the config file and the template folder. And what we did is we merged it with the Process Wire installer. So this file is, or this folder rather, is re ready to go up to our web server or our web host, whatever you want to call it. So in order to do this, we're going to have to set up our FTP client. So as we saw in the earlier videos, we'll be using Cyberduck. So I'm going to launch Cyberduck. Now, if you have a look here, what you see here are four bookmarks. <clears throat> when you first install Cyberduck, there are three. The fourth one is um, the bookmark for my website. So my website is www.thedatabase.my. It's a Malaysian website. And um, anyway, before we go any further, I'd just like to share with you some of the preferences that I use in Cyberduck. So I'm going to go up to the top left menu, Cyberduck, Preferences. Um, what I did was I unchecked Save Workspace and I unchecked Open New Browser Window on Startup. So basically... Um, I don't want it to launch any um, server connections when I first open the program. And I'd like to sort of start from ground zero, where I see the bookmarks when I launch Cyberduck. So that's why I uncheck these two guys. This is under the General tab. So if I go to Browser, I like to check to show hidden files. So check that guy. Um, in the editor tab, I've selected Text Wrangler to be my text editor. Um, as I go through, uh, everything is pretty much okay. What I would like to do though here is mention to you that I unchecked, automatically check for updates. Now, the reason I did this is when we start uploading things, it becomes a bit awkward if suddenly we get notified midway through a file transfer that, um, you know, a, an update for the program is available. So I prefer to uncheck, automatically check for updates. And instead, on a regular basis, I just come in here and I check for update now um, to see if there are any updates for the program. And it's always good to update to the, um, to the latest version. Okay, so I'm going to close this guy. Um, just one last thing to show you. If we click on this again, get it, make Cyberduck be the active window. Okay. Here it says donate. So if you find this program useful, please consider donating to the developers of this program. Okay. Now, as I said, it originally comes with three bookmarks. I've added the fourth one in, which is my own website. So how you would sort of go about doing this is you'd hit this guy here, open connection. Now, this is the thing. Whenever you um, want to have a website, you need to have a web host. And so the web host generally, um, shall we say, allows you to use their services for either a month or three months or six months or a year. Most people tend to get their uh, lower end web hosts sort of based on a yearly basis uh, or yearly cycle. So anyway, w whichever web host you use and whatever the duration you're engaging them for, when you first uh, pay them, what happens is they will send you an email that has some very important details on it. Now the details that we need are the address of the web host or the server, rather, the address of the server they've allowed us to use, um, your username and your password, and the port address for the server. So we need these credentials or details, if you like, to connect to our server. 
and this is what this window here does when I click open connection so basically you got to fill this in so um, there's your server address here now what we're going to be using is the method known as SFTP uh, if you click on this uh, drop down here there's FTP and SFTP so these two are the most common that we would use now FTP is pretty much the same thing it's slightly faster but the disadvantage with FTP is that this server address the username and the password these are things that uh, you do not want people to be able to see because if they have these details they can hack into your website so we don't really want that so uh, secure file transfer protocol is basically what the S there is for so it's a more secure way of transmitting your data out over the internet okay now this more options guy here this path thing here um, what what it is here is um, let's say you have filled in the server address the username the password and you hit connect so if everything's correct it will connect to your server now when it connects to your server what's happening is you're going into what you would call sort of the root directory so basically that's like the top of the folder structure at least that you are allowed into uh, normally we as the customers uh, where we're hosting these websites we're not really allowed right at the very top there's sort of a, a ceiling that we're not allowed to venture beyond but nonetheless uh, this is called the the root directory so when you when you successfully log in you probably see some folders there or something and um, you're gonna have to navigate to where your website files are supposed to sit so once you connect a different window will pop up and you can navigate through so this is sort of uh, something that I think if you contact your web host they'll be able to help you with um, where exactly you're supposed to go so we'll cancel this I've already set up my um, bookmark here um, and we're ready to connect to the server so we're good with um, Cyberduck so I'm just gonna quit Cyberduck for a minute now I'd like to explain to you this um, idea of um, there's two ways we can send this guy here our process wire installer folder we could send it as a folder and inside this folder you have a lot of files and other folders so you could send it up to your web host using cyberduck in this fashion the problem with that though is that uh, it's a very slow way of transferring all your files I wouldn't be surprised if it took half an hour to do it that way and um, yeah there has to be a better way and there is and the uh, better way of doing it would be to take this file and if I right click on it I can do this compress wire master zip process wire master zip so this this we have this zip folder now the idea is that this single file if we uploaded it to our website takes a much much shorter time now once it's up in our website what we can do is we can unarchive it or we can extract it and that will basically bring us to this guy over here again so our strategy is we're not going to upload the process wire installer folder we're going to upload the process wire zipped up folder that's what we're going to do okay now we have another problem here when a Mac zips up a folder and you send or it zips up a file but if you send it to either a Windows machine or a Linux based machine when you unarchive it or you unzip it unfortunately there's going to be a lot of extra stuff in there which is part of the Mac OS X operating system that we really don't want to be there so it's gonna make a mess of things so we can't use this approach 
So I'm going to right click on this and move this to trash. So um, there is a tool available that enables us to zip up a file or folder in Mac OS X but it does not add in all this extra unwanted stuff that pretty much creates a lot of havoc later on. So if we go here to our browser, I've sort of pulled it up already. This is the tool here. It's a, it's a free tool. It's called Yimu Zip, and I've gone ahead and downloaded it. So if I go to my finder and I go to my downloads folder, here it is here. I'm going to drag it onto the desktop, close the finder. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this file. Now normally whenever you have a program it's going to be in this .dmg file extension which is sort of uh, abbreviation for disk image. So I'm just going to double click on that and if you notice two things happen this window pops up and we have something that looks sort of like a drive here on our desktop so the way you install software on a Mac is pretty simple you just drag the application and put it in the applications folder like so so I've done that now I'm finished with this disk image so I'm going to sort of eject it so what I do is I right click and select eject okay so I'm going to take this guy and put it in our uh, snippets and files folder that we created in a previous video. Okay, so if I go back to our finder and go to applications, I'm going to look for emuzip. There it is. I'm going to double click on it. Now we get this window. It says, is an application downloaded from the internet? Are you sure you want to open it? Yes, I do. So I'm going to open that. Okay, and we get this window here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the finder. And if you've seen what I do before, I can right click on that, options, keep in dock. And I'm going to get this guy and drag it over here because we're not going to use it very often. So I tend to arrange my, my icons in a way that I use the most commonly ones and place them further to the right. And progressively, the less I use them, the further they go to the left. With the exception of the MAMP Pro, but um, in this case, I park it on the extreme left next to the other circular icon so it sort of matches up I guess I'm just a bit um, what's the word um, obsessive compulsive in some ways okay so back to this guy this is the tool we need and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this process wire master folder installer and just drop it here so this pop-up window appears and it asks us the type of zip file we want to create now we want to create the PC type, so I'm just going to click OK. And it goes ahead, it does its stuff, it opens up a finder window for us, and it's on the desktop, which is great. So I'm going to close that. OK, so it's been a bit of a long journey, but um, we now have our prepared file. So I'm going to get to the top left corner in the menu and quit Emu Zip. So there we go. So after many videos, we're finally ready to upload our assembled version of the process wire installer up into our web host. So this will be what the next video covers. So thank you very much for watching.